What state are we in? We're in the state of clean energy. Hawaii is the state of clean energy. Whether it's true or not doesn't matter. That's what we believe. That's we the title go forward of the show. With that. And here's Maria Tomei, and she is equipped in every way to talk about the state of clean energy. Hi, Maria. Hi. Thanks for having me on here today. <laughs> we have a great topic today. This is so important. And I, you know, it's, it's always there, this topic, except it doesn't get addressed all the time. And uh, how shall I frame the topic is, uh, what is the landscape? Who's in charge? Who's doing what? You know, we have so many people and organizations involved in clean energy. We don't have a, a specific, <clears throat> identifiable leader in clean energy. So how, who does what and how is this going to get done if we have our goals and targets to reach? Yeah. Okay. You made a list. I didn't make the list. Sorry, you okay. didn't make a list. You got a list. <laughs> yeah. It which was, I respect. It was a draft. You know, a couple of years ago, there was a discussion. Um, the Energy Policy Forum had one of those summits. and. There was a discussion of what would be useful. And a lot of folks expressed that knowing who does what, and even just having a list of who does what in the energy space would be useful, especially because there are always new folks coming in who would like to get a quick review of, OK, who's in charge of what piece of this puzzle. And the next stage was going to be, OK, what are the incentives, and what incentives are missing, and what incentives might be working across Should premises. Have that one too? No, I don't think that. <laughs> Had this, one. this is a good start. Yeah, so this was the this was the first one, and I didn't put it together. You know, we discussed it. Um, as okay. I said, this I'll, was a while I'll, back, I'll so I can't take credit. Maria did not put this or, together, or but, blame. but she she approved it. I though. appreciate it, and she appreciates it, and oh, so do I. Yeah. So let's go through it. Let's talk about, and this is not necessarily in order of importance or of size or power. It's just the, the things that come to mind first. Yeah, the things that were on the list. <laughs> things that were on the list. Yeah. You know, where yeah. the list came from. Yeah. Okay, what's on the list? So it starts off with the legislature, because they set the overall state policies. And they do the specific goals and objectives as well. In statute, everybody can see them, argue about them, eventually change them if they're not going in the right direction. So I think that's why the legislature was listed first, because they not only establish the goals and the policies, but they also fund the state agencies that are involved and put into place the incentives that you know, might be at the state level. Can I talk about it now? Yeah. OK. They are really not a good choice, because energy is like technology. It requires expertise, requires you know, putting your nose on the grindstone all the time, reading all the journals, understanding the latest technologies knowing what's happening in other states. It is very mm, evidence intensive, very technology intensive. The legislature, the House goes every two years, and then there's a turnover. Um, the committees are turned over. Uh, the committee chairs may or may not have any background, training, expertise in energy. Um, wouldn't it be better if they took advice from the other leaders who were involved in energy, or whoever they may be, and just, you know, just sort of accepted their advice and accepted their proposed bills? Well, so after the legislature takes the input from everybody and writes the statute, then it is written. And it doesn't change every time the legislature changes. You think they've done a good job? So, well, at least it's in writing. You think they've done a good job? Yeah, that's I mean, we have a bill now Actually, that's been three times in the legislature yeah. to try to deal with the solar and storage issue. Yeah. And three times they haven't passed it, and I don't think they're going to pass it this year either. You know, I think that the overarching energy policies are good. Overarching? Now, the energy policies are good. You know, yeah. Okay, but that's not it, increased. though. they got to do stuff. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So they have, every year, they have a specific list of things that they're interested in that year. And so there are the bills that do things every year. But okay. the, the energy policies, if you're looking at the policies, I think they could have done better, put it of that course. way. Of course. Yeah, I'd love to get in there and clean stuff up. But yeah. anytime so, you, know, to you touch me, something, it means that, you know, especially if it's a major change, then everybody who's been expecting that to be the rules by which they are engaged in this space have to go and scrabble. And so you need to know what you're doing and, you know, to a certain extent, uh, the, the legislative process is messy, as we all know. Sausage. Yeah, yeah. But, but, it's, you know, but, it's, but it's one of those things that you understand it. And if you do understand where it fits and where the other pieces fit, then you can better deal with it. 
us having it on the list. But you have list. to it's very, deal with They're it. a very important part. You have to deal with it. You have to make sure who, that the who people who have? chair the committees Sorry. know about energy. Yeah. I mean, I can, without naming names, I can tell you there's some experts in energy in the state legislature right now who don't sit on any energy committees. I mean, undeniable, well-known <laughs> experts who don't sit on energy energy committee. Is that a waste? It would be um, good, of course, to be able to know who has expertise in what and get them all. It's a good reason. For that. It can't for be a good reason. For I that. was not involved with that, <laughs> okay. so I'll have to, I haven't even asked about that. So. Let's move on to the yeah. next one. Okay, so then is the governor because once the legislature says this is what shall be done, expressing the will of the people, then the administration takes it and. The governor Works himself. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you can't fellow. leave the governor off of you the I mean, the fellow who said, we're not going to do yeah. LNG, we're not going to do Nextera without having any information aside from, I don't know what, where we got it from, uh, <laughs> so. to make these pronouncements without even consulting <laughs> with anybody else on this long list, right? So you're not denying that it's an important part of the energy piece. It could be, but it isn't. Yes. Okay. So moving on <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the other the other parts of the okay, administration yeah. that along, do yeah. get into the, the details. <laughs> so the next one on the list is Energy Resources Coordinator. So that's DBED. That, that's the, that's the, the head yeah. of DBED is by statute. Now when Louis Salavaria was there, he, he kind of, he, he kind of uh, delegated all of that to the chief energy officer in DBED, and he didn't do a whole lot himself. I mean, I, I think he intentionally didn't want to act as the chief of energy in the state. Am I right about that? I was not really paying attention to that. But did you I do did, anything? You know. We I should have a meeting. We should see, have a, yeah, a, a, yeah. an interview I have, with him. I have to admit him. that this was not intended to be a report on who did what specifically individuals. This is the agency okay, who does I'm what. I'm just being a gadfly here. Yes, Maria. and I know you love and to you be you don't have to respond to my bait at all. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, but it's very, it is very often that the energy office is the entity that is tasked with doing a lot of the work and uh, works very closely with... What is it with, supposed to do? Is it supposed okay. to develop policy? Because I haven't seen it do that. Okay, so... I've seen it. I've seen it. Um, the legislature gave it a, a, the London Economics deal um, on models for utilities, which took a million dollars and two years. And I don't think the report has actually been made public yet. Um, and I'm wondering uh, if, if there's more to it than that that okay, we don't so, know about. So you'll like this. Uh, the Energy Resources Statute, HRS 196. Yes. Yeah, you know, law, right? Yeah, law, it's law it's law actually law. got some really good stuff yeah, in there. Yeah. So findings and declarations of necessity. And, of course, this statute was enacted in 1974, and then it was revised several times after that. But it talks about the global demand for petroleum and the um, danger to the economy of the disruptions in the price and potential for disruptions in supply and, you know, the need for diversity. And then it comes about the need for comprehensive strategic planning. It actually says that right there. Both short-range and long-range planning, right? And then it says such planning efforts will identify the present conditions and the major problems relating to energy resources. Their exploration, like, like, like development, production, and distribution. It will show the projected nature of the situation and the rate of change. Present, oh, sorry, the present conditions for the foreseeable future, oh, based on a projection of current trends in the developments of energy resources in Hawaii, and include initiatives designed to fundamentally change how Hawaii consumes energy by accelerating the production of renewable and alternative energy, increasing energy efficiency, developing and adopting new technologies, and ensuring the state's energy security. When was this passed? Uh, I don't know what part of this statute was enacted in what years, but it's in there. So this Who's is supposed in, to do it? This is, in, well, this is the state energy. This is the energy resources statute. So the Energy Resources Office is supposed to do that. Yeah. Is supposed to do that. So the state, you do that state energy office. So there are many pieces to this, and you know this is what the statute says, and they have done these over the years. Have and, you seen it? Yeah, pieces of it. You know, I as I said, I'm just talking about what's in the statute and what has okay. been on and this I'm list just, of who does what. I'm, the, I'm the okay, curious gadfly okay. here today. So, 
I don't, did you make it to the Maui Energy Conference? Sorry, no, the we Energy had a Conference from on the Maui. Maui. Okay, so one of the things that I saw on Monday um, at the Resilience Summit in Ko'olaupoko was really cool. You'd love it being a tech kind of person. It actually shows the island of Oahu and the energy resources and the sites and what the, the land classifications and, you know, you can actually change the graph to show over the years what percentage from what were in the power supply improvement plan. And so it's a way to show visually to the public, to people new to the space, what it might look like, where things might be, where the transmission lines are, what is the topography that we're dealing with. It's really cool. I said, hey, could you bring it down? I've got this thing on Wednesday at 4. But they were very busy, and it was a really short fuse. But you know, that would be a really interesting discussion, because it takes the different pieces of the energy puzzle, the folks who are developing a way to visualize and communicate and analyze the trends and the projected future in a way that people can understand, together with reports that were filed at the Public Utilities Commission that are about this thick, you know. Reports by the resources officer? Well, no, that was the Hawaiian Electric Power Supply Improvement oh, okay, Plan. Okay. You know, it, it took that data and it made it visually um, accessible to folks who might be interested in it. Now, of course, these things change, right? We said, hey, where's the, where, where's the information from the projects that were just approved? Is that is not on there yet? But it is, it is a way to engage the data that's been developed mm -hmm. and the public's interest in knowing what's where and how big and how fast. The public really care about that? Yeah. It's, it's, well, of course. To me, you know, I'm looking for policy. I'm looking for somebody that says we should reinstate the tax credit for electric vehicles. And it is, a, it is really a too bad that we, we abandoned that. And we should not wonder why the number of electric vehicles being sold in the state is essentially flat. Um, so if we want wait, to... Wait, 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 wait. Have you bought an electric car yet? Not yet. Okay. I know if I do, that'll change the numbers. But, you know, we're supposed to have a target on that one, too. I don't think we're reaching that target. We have a million vehicles in the state, and we have, like, mm, was it six or 7,000? Mm -hmm. actually right now on the streets. Uh -huh. um, what we need is incentives. We need statutory incentives. Somebody has to encourage us to do it or discourage us from using other types of transportation. That's the way you get to a goal because if you say, look, buy an electric vehicle because it's fun, buy an electric vehicle because that's going to help you save the world, people aren't going to do that. They have to be incentivized. People, yeah, you know, people are, yeah. It's just like climate change. There's it's the same the thing. The adoption curve, a right? You've got the early adopters yeah. who are there because it's new and cool and exciting right, and right. fun, right? And then you've got the late folks who are like, I'm not going to get into one of those no matter what. And then you've got the ones in the middle who are looking at what's available and how much it costs yeah. and the practicality and, yeah. you know, whether it works for them or not. And so you've got the free parking. I don't know why this reminds and, me of measles. Okay. You know, yeah. in measles, you say, you say, uh, <laughs> you know, if, if you want to vaccinate your kid, vaccinate them. Okay. But if you have some sort of objection to that on a philosophical, religious, or even a scientific, perceived scientific ground, don't vaccinate them. And the result is we have a worldwide outbreak of measles because everybody feels free to make their own decision about it. Uh -huh. That doesn't work. You can't deal with climate change that way, and you can't deal with developing energy that way. The government has got to step in and say, no, no, we want you to do this. We really do. We're going to incentivize you. And we have to do that. I think. And some governments are designed to do that. Okay. Right. And to I me, it's related to climate change. I would, I would, if I would we let ready. people decide about climate okay. change all by themselves, <laughs> we're not going to do anything. Yeah. And in fact, in the state of Hawaii, where we should be very you know, aware of climate change, we haven't done anything. Can you tell me about a, a single project that would deal with climate change? That's but not a gonna, single yeah. project that would actually deal with it. Dime one. There are a bunch of projects that are improving our okay. energy system to produce less carbon, which helps with climate change okay. now. And then the other part, that's the next generation's challenge, is engineering our cities deal with climate change. Later. So kids um, consider civil engineering as a career. Mechanical engineering is good, electrical oh. is good, but civil is really where it's at when you're talking about coastlines and 
I'm with you on that. Like That's that. totally and good. Is, you know, and also smarter design and you know, urban planning and all the rest of it. And transportation is a big piece. But we're getting off the subject. What I was going to ask you is we talk about this bell curve, right? So you've got the early adopters, you've got the tail end folks, and then you've got all the ones in the middle. Now, Jay, you keep talking about electric vehicles, and then you say, I didn't buy one. So on that curve, where are you? Give me a tax credit, and I will probably be encouraged to buy it. But right now, <laughs> I'm in rather encouraged to take okay. a short break, Maria. OK. Let's take a short break. OK. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Tim Apicella. I'm here with Cynthia Sinclair. And this is Trump Week. It's going to appear every Friday at 11 AM. Between Jay Fidel, Cynthia, and myself, we talk about Trump, the activities, and the news stories for that week as it pertains to the Trump administration. We hope you tune in and watch the fun. Aloha. See you then. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Okay, we're back, we're live. We're here with, with Maria Tomei, and we're talking about all the people in the pie. All the, all the names and organizations in the landscape who are part of the energy initiative in Hawaii, the Clean Energy Initiative. So let's go to the yeah, next yeah. one. Okay, so you've got the Energy Resources Coordinator, and then you've got the Energy Office as well. Okay. So, and then, Isn't you know, that the same got, thing? Yeah, well, the Energy Resources Coordinator is the head of DVED, so the director. And then the Energy Office is the program that, that does. Well, so what's does the difference? The so so it's, a, it's a title thing. Yeah. But the actual, it doesn't... The, the actual DBED person actually doesn't yeah. do anything. Well, the, the actual it, statute says this is what shall be done under the energy resources. The energy office is, is helping the DBED director yeah, do it. But, exactly. And he just signs off. Okay. It depends on the right. dynamics of any people, right. of okay, course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So the next one on the list is If the, I want to get the plan yeah. that's, that's required by this statute, where would I go? Well, you'd probably start off with your annual report. And then you'd look at all the annual reports that talk about where they are in the various stages of planning the different pieces of it, the different parts okay. of it. All right. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. We've done plans. Okay. It's, the it's state sound, of Hawaii it sounds has, very elusive, but okay. Plans. Okay, what's Should next? I bring it in? Should I print it out? <laughs> no, I'm I don't just think kidding. It's, you know, I don't think yeah. it works for me because I, well, I think you've got to have somebody who says we can. Follow me. I'm, we're going to do this now. Yeah. Nobody's saying that. Yeah. And do you think really that that would work? One person ignoring everything that's happening and saying. Well, with due regard, I mean, even me? Xi Jinping, um, you know, has has uh, he has oppressive um, institutions in China, and he puts people in jail and in training camps, does terrible, I you know, inhuman things to Chelsea? them, but. In the, gov in the government of China, he's got these committees, and the committees consider issues, and they make recommendations to him, and likely as not, he actually accepts the recommendations. One of the areas of recommendation is in energy. Now, if Xi Jinping wants to get something done, like moving from coal you know, to LNG, he likes LNG, um, he can do that. Yeah. And he's also got people who are thinking for him. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you know, they're seeking a consensus they're making a committee report, to him, and he's following the report. So there are several pieces, several people involved. There's a lot of discussion involved. There are decisions made. All true. Yeah, gee, All true. I wonder, yeah. But when it comes so time for action, yeah. you get action. Okay, so I sense you're jealous and you want to be king of the energy. No, that, that's no. That's okay, that's okay. I, I think we ought to watch how he does this. <laughs> I, think. I think we ought to watch Singapore, too. I mean, de democracy is tumultuous and um, so forth. So, that's, so, what, what so that's, but that's one of the beauties of being able to communicate not just about what is being thought here, but to get information from other places on what's worked, what hasn't, you know, what's been tried, if it failed, why, okay. what could be done differently. Okay, and my, my problem, yeah. and I'm sure we'll get to this, is when all that information gets to a certain place, 
there's a certain organization or person who says, okay, I got all the information. I'm going to make, the buck stops here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a decision now. And it's obsolete who, who is, the next is, day. Who is, that, who is that person? <laughs> well, it depends on what piece of the puzzle you're talking about, okay. right? Yeah. Okay. In fact, I was reading the IEEE magazine, I believe, that had sure. a whole thing on, so China's, on <laughs> China's electrical grid and the yeah. really super high voltage that they're developing. Yeah, if, you, yeah. if you like nerdy stuff, you'll enjoy it. I could bring it well, in. They are anyway. doing that. I mean, they Yeah, trains. exactly. They're so, but there are so many different trains are hundreds of it. kilometers. And, they, and Hawaii, you know. Well, ours is 20 miles. You yeah, know. yeah. Well, Keep bringing the train into this. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> take I take that back. Okay, <laughs> don't get derailed here. <laughs> Sorry. No pun. Okay, yeah, no pun. Um, okay, so the energy data and the reports and the strategies and the plans, that's part of, that's really part of the informed decision making. Whoever's making the decisions about whatever, whether it's investors or legislators or you as you decide that EVs are or not right for you this year. Who you is know. this now? That's Whoever needs the information at the time that they're making the decisions, that they are in well, whatever see, part of the landscape oh, I see. they're at. I, I get this information from yeah. the energy office. I, so I got to read it for, first. Yeah. And then it tells me that, for example, electric cars are good. Yeah. And, and help the world. And they tell you, you should get one. And they told me I should get one, and even though they're not offering any particular what? incentive. Well, maybe they are. Mm, OK. And okay. then you promise to get one? OK. Give me a dollar mm, amount? No, 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 take? no, Anyway, no. sorry. So, so is that, no, I'm supposed to read that and, and act on it? If that is what your role is in this. Okay, okay. So the question is, who else are we talking about okay. so, that is in the, in the pie, in the landscape, that actually makes decisions and, you know, contributes to the collective okay. so development we, of the uh, initiative? Yeah, okay. So one of the things that the Energy Office does that we haven't really mentioned yet is work with the folks who want information on Hawaii's energy system. So the project developers, they say, hey, we're coming, you know, what permits do I need? Where are the good resources? You know, the Energist map, I don't know if you've seen, it's a geographic information system that you can actually find out what the zoning is on the parcel of land so that you're interested facilitation in. Facilitation for the developer. Exactly. And so a lot of that is behind the scenes. So it doesn't necessarily look like someone's made a decision for you. What they've done is empowered oh. whoever is trying to do something. It's telling you how. To do it in the right way, in the right place. So you don't waste with the time. information. Supposed exactly. facilitation. Exactly. But you don't get credit as a facilitator necessarily, which because other people are building the projects, they're what getting the What about the finance. PUC? Okay, that's on the list. Um, okay. And I consider that an important okay, decision. Okay, so, but I did want to mention, body. you know, that there's there's a lot. We are living in a society that has development that's done by private parties, and they need a lot of information and resources, and they need to communicate on the permitting side with the public, with the legislators, you know, what are the impacts, what are the benefits, what are the trade-offs, you know, where are we going as a society together? And so a lot of that communication piece comes from the facilitation it's, role. It's hard to get decision making okay. so, done by the public because they have really no way to do that. They have yes, no way they to do, do that. They make decisions I mean, about, what, decision are about you going to support, rooftop solar? are Is you going to oppose? Are you going to support or oppose a project? Do you believe that climate change is something to do something about? Do you believe that you, you know, can support Me somebody personally. building some, the public? You uh, okay as the public? Pretend you're just the public and not the host of the clean. <laughs> Well, you can convince me. I, I, I think right. climate change is very real. Right. So you are making a and, decision. And if, and if a governor got the up and running for governor and said, I will do stuff about right. climate change, I would vote for him. So that's you, about the eggs, extent of my power. That's a lot of power. And you but are I'm, probably I'm one communicating of, uh, with... I'm one of, what, 600,000 voters in the state. I, and? I'm, what about the other ones? And what made you think climate change was important? And what made you aware of what the options were, what the costs were, what the time frame was? Information, right? Right. Yeah. But, but Good I, information or bad information? Uh, but you're asking a very yeah. general question. Yeah. And, uh, and I would have to delegate it to the people in charge. And the public so, is And the people in charge should be listening to me. <laughs> yeah. But the public, you know, I mean, yeah. they, you, if you, you know, you can't trust the public to make a decision that is knife-edge type decision about where to put a power plant. 
or how much, um, how much mix we need in the portfolio, um, or about whether we should allow LNG or not allow in. Or but they decide on a daily basis what the priorities are, what the priorities should be, how quickly things should move. And they decide whether or not to get engaged in that topic, because everybody's busy with whatever it is True. that they're you know, focused on. And so don't underestimate the power of the public and the importance of it. But you can't just sit there and wave your hands you know, and say, oh, I'm listening to the public uh, and not do other things. I don't things. underestimate the so power of the public. Say, I believe the public has huge power. Yeah. In what way? To stop projects. Yeah, that too. It, uh, so the power, the public provide, has a tremendous opportunity to stop projects. And, and, so and, they, and there's always somebody who would like to stop a project, especially if it's in his backyard. And if they have the interest and the means and the, the ability to communicate their issues it's and true. their recommendations. True. Look at the dairy farm in Kauai. Right. Look at that. Right. So um, things, yeah, the public. And, and look at so many projects in energy have been stopped yeah. for no good reasons by, by somebody who, who lived nearby. And if you understand why they succeeded or failed. So if you, if you, instead of judging that it's a good or bad reason, if you say, I would like to understand why it succeeded or why it failed, you know, what are the elements that cause success? And a lot of them are the trust that something is going to be done right, you know, developing the relationship with the community. And the community very often coming forward and saying, we think this is more important than that. And so if they feel that, you know, preventing... Who measures that? Well, that, that's what you... The, the proof community? is in the Who point. measures what the community has to say? The, well, that's where the develop... If somebody's going to... Let's go back to the project development piece. Let's say if somebody wants to develop something somewhere, and they, li they listen to what people are concerned about, and they address those concerns, they may succeed, okay? But you know... But if they ignore... What's being said? Uh -huh. People get mad. Sure, they get louder. They do not have any trust that that will be done yeah. well or right or for the right reasons. Yeah. And so there's a huge difference. Yeah. But anyway, so well, I'm thinking important. back to the super ferry. And you can't. Yeah. The super ferry yeah. could have been a great project for everyone yeah. in the state, but there were a handful of people didn't like it, and they stopped it. Um, and and uh, you know, I'm I'm still sad about that because I don't think the super ferry is coming back. I think we lost that. Yeah. I think we could lose any energy project pretty much the same way. And people, who, you know, they just oppose things. They're yeah. activists. And they, they're a very small minority of the people who've been reading, thinking, have an opinion on it. So you ultimately need governmental organizations to step in and make a decision and, you know, listen to the ones who like it, listen to the ones who don't like it, and then take a position. You don't have that. You have cacophony. You have fragmentation. You have, you have a lockup. Okay. And so, so, so I think in many ways we have demonstrated we are very good at that. And some things actually do succeed <laughs> and prosper. So let's say that a project actually gets to the point where they sign an agreement. You know, we're talking about the big stuff. You know, the little stuff, of course, has a whole different dynamic. And that's actually outside of the regulated utility space. But you wanted to get to the PUC, so let's talk about I the do. regulated I, utility I do. space. I do. So, more than I can say. say. Have, However, yes. we're out of time. No. Yeah, no. Maria. We only got to item number six on I, the list of don't you 24. you love this conversation? <laughs> this, Maria and I don't see each other that much, you know. Um, but now we do see each other. We understand each other where, you know, each I one have the statutes in the landscape. The statute for the peace. The statutes. We understand, you know, this level of knowledge that she has. And so we're not done. Next week, Maria, okay. Wednesday, 4 o'clock, uh -oh. Hawaii, State of Clean Energy. <laughs> okay, I got to check. You have to come back. We, we, <laughs> what if only, I can bring the cool thing that shows the... We're you, nowhere okay. near our target. All right. We have to come back. That's okay. Maria Tomei. Okay. And I'm Thanks. Jay Fidel, and this is a great conversation that needs to continue maybe more than one week, but at least next week. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Jay. It's been great. And Always thanks to everybody who watched. Aloha.